physics anyway. So uh, you're going to be, uh, I guess you've got your other classes you got to go through today, but this is kind of an exciting day. Um, I'm just curious to know uh, how many people are going to be traveling over spring break. All right. So I want you to talk to each other about what you plan to do over spring break. What's going on? What are your plans for spring break? Go talk to each other. Share where they're going. I'm hoping to go to South Carolina to do some camping in the mountains. So I'll be on the west side of South Carolina. Uh, I'm going up to Oconee State Park, and there's another one, Lake, Lake what, something maybe State Park. Uh, we have some friends that we're going to be camping with, and um, looking forward to leaving out on uh, on Sunday. Uh, well. So last time we were together, you all took a test. I'm gonna return the test to you. And then we're gonna spend the rest of our time making one of these. Did I show you this last time? Yeah. yeah, hope I can get this, there we go. Hopefully by the time you finish today, you will get to take one of these home with you. So um, this, this is gonna be our introduction to magnetism and that's what we're gonna take up after we get back from spring break. Um, in terms of the test, uh, you will see that the test is written out of 70 points. Most people did very well on this test. Um, and you're also going to see that there may be some numbers that are stretched out because I made a mistake in terms of one of the questions, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. What we're going to do is I'm going to return the test to you. The test is based on 70 points. So if you want to see what your percentage score is, then take the largest number that's out of 70 points and, uh, and then do that, do that division. These are in no particular order. Here we go. Willow? Maybe? Debbie Claire? Jack? Linda Scotchy, Ava, Kara, Abigail, Molly, Alexis, Keller. I'm going to have a calendar today. Okay. Olivia Burns. Ruthie. JC. Marina. Lindsay. Uh -huh. Sasha. Elise. Now I have a whole stack of papers here that have been things that maybe you weren't here or you turned something in. Uh, Keller, Molly, Steph, Alexis, Kara, Alexis. Oh, sorry, Abigail, Molly, Keller, Steph, Keller. Keller was asking for the, um, a competition. She was competing uh, in swimming, I guess, and was gone a, a bit. Steph, 
All right, now I'm also returning to you your original power bills. Um, so these were ones that you gave to me and, um, and I photocopied. I'm returning them to you now. Keller, and Claire, Alexis, Ruby, Kara, the statues, and I'll give it to you here. Uh, and I think this may be page two of this. Um, here's another statue. So maybe one was a photocopy. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all the papers. All right, so the average on this test out of 70 points was 63.47 out of 70. And if you do that percentage wise, you get 90.7%. So many of you scored very well on this test. Well done, congratulations. There are two questions I wanna talk about, and then I'll give it uh, to you to ask questions about. I screwed up on question number 14. So question number 14 said, a hard rubber rod is rubbed with soft animal fur in the process. So this was the idea that Benjamin Franklin had these conventions. And the rod is supposed to become negative and the fur is to become positive. That's the convention that Benjamin Franklin gave us. I had originally said that the rod becomes positively charged and the fur becomes negatively charged. That's not correct. That's supposed to be the silk glass convention there. So we, uh, I missed that. The answer to that is supposed to be answer D. And so that's the, um, the answer. You'll see that I went back and made some corrections. The other question that I want to talk about is which one? Number 23. So number 23 says a positively charged insulating rod is brought close to an object that is suspended by a string. If the object is attracted toward the rod, we can decisively conclude. Now, because I know that this is a positively charged rod, then I know that I can either have a negatively charged pith ball, which is attracted, or I can have a neutral pith ball. So both of those would show attraction. The key word in this question was, what can we decisively conclude? And decisively, we cannot conclude whether the object is charged or whether it's not charged. If we got repulsion, we could decisively conclude that the pith ball was positively charged, but we can't decisively conclude whether it's neutral or whether it's negative. And so the idea is that the object is positively charged. That's definitely wrong. The object is ne negatively charged. Well, we can't decisively conclude that. It might be neutral. The object's not charged at all. Well, it might be not charged at all, but we can't decisively conclude that. So that's out. The object is a conductor. Well, we don't know whether it's a conductor or it's an insulator. So the answer sometimes is kind of those were the questions that I want to talk about. Other questions that you want to discuss? Anything on the test you want to talk about? All right. So we're going to set the test away. And I want to pull out this lab building a small electric motor. And I asked you to do some reading about that. Uh, show of hands, how many people brought batteries today? All right. Hopefully you've got one, or if you didn't bring one, you can find someone who did bring one. I'd like you to turn and talk to your neighbor about what's going to happen. In this. The reading that I asked you to do is about this. I want you two to talk to each other about that. Discuss it with each other. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello. Oh wait. It's Yeah, it's nothing like. Uh, it looks weird, like. Yeah, it's it's rotated, but I tried to get. I wanted to put it on a single piece of paper, so I had four pages that need to go down to two. All right. Show of hands, how many people read the lab? Okay, well, that's good. All right, good. All right, this is not a quiz, but I would like you to put your lab away. And I want to give you some questions. This is not a quiz. It says lab quiz on it, but I want you to answer some questions. So put your lab away. Right. Just yeah, it's quizzes. Take you to write down. Yeah. Is there any chemistry flashbacks? Uh, chemistry flashbacks, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, at least we had our lab notebook back then. Yeah, you had your lab notebook back then. Yeah. I want you to answer as many of these questions as you can. Should I be given the lab quizzes and the physics class? Yeah. Last year. All right, when you've done as much as you can, I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to see if you're able to answer any more questions. So talk to each other about the questions that you've got in front of you. Yes. I said, I 
I had no All right. So now let me tell you that when you have your test on magnetism, these, these are all questions that you need to be able to answer. And I will go ahead and tell you what the answers are. And they're not going to make a lot of sense to you right now. But in the process of building your motor, this is something that you want to pay attention to. Because I'm, these are parts that we're going to need to, uh, to know about. And um, so these are all parts that, that you want to, to be aware of. All right, first of all, did you bring your own new D, D cell battery for today's activity? I did give this quiz once upon a time. And if you did, then you would have gotten two points on this quiz. And if you didn't, you would have gotten zero points for that particular question on this quiz. All right, five applications of machines that involve motors. Motors are ubiquitous in our society. You know what the meaning of that word is? Turn to your neighbor and say ubiquitous. What does ubiquitous mean? They're everywhere. You get motors everywhere. Okay, a fan has a motor in it. An electric window, like you're in your car, has a motor in it. Your uh, computer disk drive, if you have one that's uh, got a disk drive, many computers don't this way these days. Um, your kitchen appliances, so your dishwasher, your refrigerator. Your mixer. They all have electric motors in it. Your washer and dryer have electric motors in it. Washer, not washer. Basically, if something spins and it has an electric core that runs up to it, it's got a motor in it. All right, energy conversion. Now we talked about this before when we played with the uh, electric uh, generators. We said that a generator and a motor are the same machine, and the energy conversion that takes place in the motor is you take electrical energy in. Yeah, and you convert it into mechanical energy. You're taking energy that comes in in the form of electricity. It turns out that because that electricity is moving, it has magnetism that is associated with it. And that magnetism is what, that interaction of magnetic fields is what causes the, uh, the, the thing to spin. In fact, that's what the answer to the next question is. What are the two magnetic principles on which motors work? The first one is that moving electricity causes magnetic fields. And like poles attract and unlike poles repel. So just like 
when we talked about electricity, that you have positive and negative charges, electric charges. Then in magnetism, we will talk about north and south poles. Now, we haven't really discussed that yet. Yes, ma'am. Don't light poles repel? What did I say? Light poles attract. It's unlike poles attract and light poles repel. I got that back. That's a bonus point on your next test, guys, folks. Yeah. Okay. It's unlike poles attract and light poles repel. Okay. That's, that's what it's supposed to be. Now, what do we mean by a pole? It's something that we'll talk about in the next. Uh, in the next, after we come back from spring break. And there's going to be some reading that you're going to do. There's no homework over spring break. But when you come back, we're going to be going to the next chapter, chapter, I think it's chapter 20 that we're going to be looking at. Five basic parts of a DC motor. Okay. So you have some source of DC electricity. Today, that's going to be your battery. You brought a battery with you. You need some external magnetic field. And that source of external magnetic field is going to be this button battery that each person is going to get for their motor. You need something that are called brushes. Brushes are the things that touch the ends of the battery and deliver the electricity to the moving parts of the motor. You have something that's called an armature. Your armature is a spinning coil that you're going to make. And the last thing that you have, and this is going to be the most tedious part of making the motor, is something called a commutator. And the commutator is the part that's going to switch on and switch off the electricity at strategic points in the rotation in your motor. Those are all questions that you're going to need to be able to answer on your next test. Now, what I would say is with this piece of paper, take this piece of paper into your lab notebook so that you'll have it to refer to that you can. Um, if you can and study when the time comes. But let's not worry about the, the understanding of those things today. Yes, ma'am. Um, do we have to do anything else to the lab, like in our lab? Yes, lab? so you will. There are going to be some questions that you're going to be answering as well. But, I, but that's not something I'm going to ask you to do today. Today, what we want to do is we want to build this motor. And we want to get it to the point where you've got it run. And I hope that you were able to do that. Now, I'm Fail to get something out of here back in the back. So let me get it out and then I'm going to tell you what it is that you're going to do. But first of all, I'd like you to talk to each other about how are you going to fashion things in your electric motor? Specifically, what are you going to do? And your hint is for you to take a look at not the theory of operation, but the procedure. So take a look at your procedure. Read through that and discuss with each other what is it that you're physically going to do in order to build this motor. So have a conversation with each other about that. Go, talk to each other. Attention 
back to the back of the room because that's where I'm going to stand and talk about things. So feel free to turn your desk around if you'd like or turn the chair around a bit. So you want to take these raw materials that I've got back here and you want to turn it into something that looks like this. So you're going to have this piece that spins around and around and it's spinning around and around because it's getting electricity from the battery. It's turning that electricity into a magnetic field and that magnetic field from the coil is interacting with the magnetic field of this battery that's there. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to start with a block. Where's my tape? I need to get tape on. And you just not organized today. I'm ready to go on spring break. Y'all don't know anything about that. Do By the way, you're supposed to have a good time today. This is supposed to be fun. I hope you have fun doing this. All right, so you're going to take your battery. And you're going to take it to the block. So you're going to take a block of wood out of this. This is going to serve as the base of your motor. And you're going to use this for being able to um, being able to support your surface. So you'll take a piece of tape and you'll attach it to that block. And when you do, you'll end up with something that looks like this. You'll also need to get yourself a little magnet out of this bin here. And it doesn't matter whether you get a rectangular magnet or a round magnet or a thick magnet or a thin magnet, any one of those magnets will work. These are just basically refrigerator magnets. The next thing you're going to need is a rubber band. Change one of the rubber bands. <laughs> You're going to need a rubber band to stretch around the ends of your motor. So you're going to take your rubber band and double it like this so that you can put it around the ends of your motor. And that's what's going to hold your brushes to the edge of your motor. Now you get to the fun part because you get to use needle nose pliers again, like you did in the previous class. And you're going to take a couple of wires that are a lot longer than they need to be. And you're going to shape them into these pieces that are going to touch the edge of your battery. So these are the brush wires. And what I'm going to suggest is that you make them too big to start with, and then you trim them down to the size that you need. So grip your wire. This is actually the same sort of copper wire that you were using in the outlet and switch lab that you were using. So basically, I just stripped off the insulation off of the outside of it. And you want to bend that wire into a loop that's going to be really, really long. That's way too long. How long, Mr. Haynes, should I make it? Well, the instructions say something. What do the instructions say about bending the brush wires? I don't There's one. The idea is that you want to be able to uh, you want to, to be able to have the thing that's going to do the spinning, which is the armature, uh, be as close to your magnet as it can without hitting the magnet. So it may be that what you're going to do is you're going to start with these long brush wires, and you're going to wait until after you make your armature in order to be able to decide how long these legs need to be. But you're going to trim some excess off of these brush wires here in order to be able to make it the right length. I'm going to hand you a piece of magnet wire. That's what this is on the stool here. I'm going to pull off about an arm's length. 
and give it to you. Now you saw how carefully I measured that. It really doesn't matter how long it is, except it needs to be uh, needs to be long enough to have several turns. And I'm going to suggest that you use some of these expo markers that are around the room as the thing that you wind your armature around. So you'll get yourself an expo marker. And you want two little arms that are going to stick out. So ultimately, this piece right here that you're going to have is what you're aiming for. You're going to take and you're just going to wrap this magnet wire around and around and around. You're making a coil. And this coil is the part that's going to become magnetic when it has electricity running through it. Now, this is called magnet wire because it becomes magnetic. But the thing that's special about it is that it has a thin coating of enamel paint on the outside of it. So it is not naked like this wire is. This wire doesn't have any insulation on it. This wire does, and it's a thin coat of insulation that has been painted onto it. And it's that paint that you're going to strategically remove in order to make the motor do what it does. That's the condensated part of this. Now, you're going to leave a little bit of excess on the ends of your coil because you want to be able to weave. You want to hold your coil together with the magnet wire. All this is described in the procedure of your, uh, your lab set. But you're going to have this coil that you end up with that's going to carry your electricity. Now I have myself a start to my armature here. But I've got to take this and these, these brushes and turn it into something that is smaller that's going to touch the edges of my battery here in case of the brushes and hold up this spinning coil. And again, the size of these things is determined by how big this loop is. So essentially how big around these, uh, these, these markers are. But the idea is that you want to, to make this coil here so that it has got arms that are long enough that will fit between the the brushes. So you want to cut off these arms so that you can have them a little longer than the battery is. And you want to make your brushes so that they are essentially tall enough to keep this coil from hitting your magnet when they're on the back. Now I'll leave this out so everybody can take a look at it and see what it looks like. But that's what you're going for. Yes, ma'am. Where do we trim the paint off? So to trim the paint off, I want you to take a look at question number six there. And question number six is talking about how you're going to trim the paint. Okay. Once you have gotten this to the point where this thing is, is the right, the kind of the right dimensions, then you're ready to do this sanding business. So I'm gonna call on someone to read number six out loud. So this is under the procedure, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. So Maggie, you're looking at me here. Would you please read number six? Now it's time. Now it's time to make the condensator for the motor. Take the sandpaper and on one side of the condensator, completely sand away the enamel coating on the magnet wire so that it will make a light for contact. All right, so what you're going to do, and we'll talk about this again when we've got a bunch of people that are ready, but you're going to take your sandpaper and you're going to take one side. So when I say one side, think about my head as the spinning coil and my arms as the two edges that are um, holding up that spinning coil. I want you to take one arm and I want you to completely sand it clean. So there's sandpaper up here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take and rub all of the paint off. 
And when you rub that paint off, you'll see that it becomes shiny. The wire becomes shiny like the wire that you use for your brushes. So essentially you're stripping away all the paint on that one side. And I'm not going to do it all here, but you get the idea. Keep reading, Maggie. Note well. Um, this next step is crucial to the proper operation of the letter. So the next step is going to be the thing that's going to either make or break your boat. Keep reading. If it is not done properly, the armature will not spin. On the other leg of the armature, Whoa. sand away only half of the enamel paint on the wire. Then in such a way, or half a turn, that leg of the armature makes electrical contact, and on the other half turn, the paint on that will prevent electrical contact. Okay, so get yourself another little block. Now, ultimately, you'll put the other block back. But you're going to want to set your armature on your block. And you're only going to want to sand if you want to think about the, the end of the, the armature as being a uh, 360 degree circle. You only want to sand away 180 degrees of that. So what you're going to do is you're going to set your armature down and you're going to sand the entire length of that side, but you're just going to sand half of it away. So you've got 180 degrees that are clean and 180 degrees that still have paint on. That's the key that's going to make your body work. Okay? Then, uh, the next part, number seven, is kind of tedious. So I call on someone to read number seven. Uh, Elise, would you please read number seven out loud? Put the armature back out of the structure. Make the armature a little bit. Don't damage the armature with water. Okay, so this piece, this part that you're doing here, once you've got things sanded, and once you've got things trimmed, then you've got to put it all together. And it's you kind of got to hold your mouth wide for this. This is an art. It's not, well, okay, there's a science. This is science class. But there's going to be each person's work will be similar to the others, but there are going to be little differences in yours. And the devil is in the details. Um, but there has to be, you, you want your armature to be able to spin freely between your fingers. And so if it's not, and you're going to want to make little adjustments with your needle nose pliers. So it's going to be a bit like an orthodontist working to try to bend things in strategic ways in order to balance the armature and let it spin. So there are going to be lots of questions. I know I'm going to play music in the background, but this is supposed to be something where you can take and, uh, and, and make this work. So pay attention to your procedures as you go along and then as you have questions then feel free to raise your questions with me and I'll try to get to you. If we don't finish today, I would like to think that we'll get that we'll get most of them work. And if we don't finish today, it's not going to be okay. Questions? So your first job is to get the two materials and be magnifying and
I think she goes. She should go with John Food. Why not? She would not do that. Why? I really suggest that to her. She's he's nice. So. Yeah, he's so nice, but she would just not want to do that. <laughs> Sorry, but she would just not want to do that. I want to find her someone to go with. I was like, George. Like, no. <laughs> I know it's hard. Wow. <laughs> I just whack my face. I saw my face turn to fire. <laughs>
see how it looks like. Yeah, it's still about one. So now what you're ready to do is you're ready to do some okay. breathing. So take your arms here. You want to keep this coil nice and tight. Do some on this side. And do some on this side here. Bring your pockets. How much twisting do you need? Uh, if, you know, you can do a lot or you can do a little. The goal is you want to keep your coil tight. So you want to. Like, is this enough? I think you've got enough there. No, I think you're fine. And we can all we can always cut some off the end if it's too long. But you've got yourself a coil. That can spin, but we like, want to make it so it spins without without wobbling. So you have to kind of shake this. But that's that's a good that's a good start on All right. Those are going to be those are going to be fine. But you have to cut them. Right. They don't need to be shorter. Something more line that right there because ultimately what has to happen is whatever magnetism that's made by this coil it's not very strong it has to interact with the magnetism that's made by this magnet it's not very strong either so you want them to be kind of close to each other if you have this up real high then close the goal is to make it um, yeah, uh -huh. so your views and use the cutters here. Can you give me a rubber band? Yeah. 
goal is ideally the chain line is where the armchairs in that position. It just Thanks. clears. Yes. So you want to stand. Did you press it? I have it yet. That's the detail. Okay. Let me tell. Just now. Okay, so do we just stand these up? She's been. Let me just do one side of this. So you can give it a start, but after you get it started, it's not spinning. These are, it's, you see this little piece like, it's a, it, it's like down, so all the way down, yeah. It's just, it. Alexis, are you doing anything fun? Yeah, so the high. Oh, hey. My mom just told me. Oh, sorry. What now? Oh. Alexis, where are you going to college? I'm going to Sam's first. Really? Oh my god. Yeah, she's not. Yeah, no, I get it. Ricky, my cousin's gonna one of my like my favorite cousin ever is gonna be at Tame Impala. Let's see introduce to Carol. Yeah, you should. Wait, you're going? Yeah. When? Wednesday night. When? Next week? No. Is this Wednesday? Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Where is it? I'm gonna see Tame Impala tomorrow. I cannot. I cannot. This is the what? Is it working? <laughs> yes. Okay. Better try. See what happens. Use that one, Sam. All right. There you go. Just gotta hit that spot. It just keeps like sliding and like. Okay, so if you slide, this is one side tall. Yeah. So this side is too tall. Oh, I see. Okay. So you might want to trim a little bit off. Essentially, you want to sit level with the yoga. Oh, look at you. All right, there you go. Yeah, 
Is it working? Yes, you got it. Go on. Okay, so if it's sliding, so what you can do is turn some on. What you might want to do, girls, is make a video of this. Of your motor. Do a snow mo video. That's all right. on your next test. That's all right. It's not really working. <laughs> Have you sanded it? Yeah. I sanded one side. Mr. A, you put the sandpaper back. Yeah, so when we're done with the sandpaper, we'll put it back. Okay. Right, so, what I want to do is, I want to take this coil that's a little bit longer, less long, and to do that, first of all, you see how it looks like this wire is coming up from the top there? And this wire looks like it's coming up from the top there. So, I want to make it thin. Yes, sir. 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 Y
do your running back right down. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to take it off so that they can play it. Nobody had a question. I did. Well, I was wondering. Okay. Like sliding into yeah. the one when I was shortened to this one. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take <laughs> yeah, yes. Is the brush supposed to have contact with the wood? Sorry, say again. Is the brush supposed to have contact with the wood? The bottom is okay. Oh, Ava! Yes. <laughs> oh, it's off. It's actually a little bit sliding. Okay, take it. Another. Wedding ring. <laughs> Wedding band. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, it's I know. So really tell me freaking about it. I was trying to do things for me last night and I literally could not do it. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. All right, so I'm going to take this. Let's Let's try to do Oh, I did it! <laughs> Go, it's going! <laughs> Thank you. 
I got it. Like, 
I thought she was Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. 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 The other side. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. See how this reflects out the bottom of the point? Yeah. So I'm going to make a key here and try to make it come out. The center of the coil. So you see now uh -huh. it's more like it's more like yeah. the center of the coil. Now I'm going to do the same thing with that. So I see what you mean there. So I'm gonna try to adjust this just a little bit around the center. something about your battery. Send it to 
Essentially, that they're fully sanded uh, inside. Oh, my battery. <laughs> what? I think, I think it's 
What just happened? I think I got it. Okay. All right. It's thin. Okay. It's thin. So that that's yeah. Yes. That's what I've been working on the last thirty minutes. Girls, and we'll need to clean up here. I've got a test that's happening in the next five period. So we we'll want to. Wait, I need help. Let's go. Like, this Teacher magic, I've got. So, you see how I have to hold it up on this thing right here? I'm jumping. probably going to trim it off there. Okay. I was watching the National Park or something. So, I'm on the. What are you doing? Are you at least? What's your. What's the word in the no one dressed up in white. I'm not dressed up in white. Karen's gonna hate it. But it wasn't as big as last time. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It was easy because last time we had it first. I'm not dressed up in white. I'm not dressed It wants to go so. Oh, wow. I'm 
If I put this in my bag, it's gonna get destroyed. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta protect it. You get to take it home. Show your mom. Mom, look what I did in school today. <laughs> All right, ladies. I like to know about I hope you all have a good break. Place where you can uh, can refer to something. We're working with the hands on. We are done with it. We're not going to do any more with. Uh, we're not going to do any more with uh, the body stuff. Got your name on. Did you get yours working? Yes, I did. All right. So part of the deal is when you when you spin it like that, if you spin so it any of your arms, the, the balance that on the to make it work. So the bend side looks like it's no, not yet. Are you just gonna hold this all day? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just walk around with it like. I love it. It's so good. Like when I was little, I would literally like adore this thing. I would use it spinning every single second. Like I would fall asleep. Well, we're like. Uh, so, well, so we just like so like well because I know our reverse outline is new today. Reverse outline, really? Yeah. Oh, ours is like dude. we turned our whole thing, our whole crisis. Yeah, our crisis. <laughs> just like. So like she's Loki assigning homework every spring break. Right? Thank you. Are you just keeping it spinning? Well, we're supposed to like have the outline done. Yeah. Which night motor is this? Is this because, well, I have done the Is this from yours over here? Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to grab it. I wonder how long it would take for this little thing to like use up all the energy of the battery. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what it's doing. Leave it going. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm sorry about being late this morning. I was having an A push essay crisis. <laughs> I will see you after break. All right, see you. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi
the live wire is black. Usually, I, this is the thing I like, I don't have a lot of help with me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not very much of it. So, I'm going to go ahead and remind you of that. Do you remind me too? Yeah. My note card is dense this time. I dense isn't the right word. So one note card. I just need one text. Because it was so late last night. It was so late. It is trying to run graph test. It was all done. Don't forget the insulation stripping tool, the needle nose pliers, the wire stripper, the fill test screwdriver, the screw glass, and the regular screwdriver. I thought it was flat. <laughs> so, yeah, so the wire is black, green is brown. Green is, okay, green is brown. And ground wire goes to black goes to gold. Light is so white is the Neutral. Neutral goes to silver. Ground goes to green. The ground oh, yeah. is green. Okay. The ground is green. Yeah. I'll put the green wires like and green. green wire. I thought the green wires are the green. I think. And the red. The white one is goes alive. to the white one goes silver. to the silver, and the black one goes to the gold. The red one. Was I just the wrote the blue 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 blue. 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 Is someone just sitting here from this last one? I think that's my sour. Did we sit like space out? Oh, um, you would space out a little bit, that would be all right, but you know, oh, there's not going to be a space for everybody. Everybody. And, uh, the rest in between everybody else. You did not have to do that. Tyler, you did. Yeah. 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 Tyler, you we're going to low-key roast her. <laughs> I thought you were okay. How did you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to go. Yeah. So I'll tell you what I'm doing with you. I'm working on the half sand side. That's the one that's <laughs> critical in terms of making my crystal good. Oh, I'm like on to the other side. And I'm just kind of... Yeah, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I